might start hopping here shortly. Kind of thought, kind of hand drive. It's Monday night in Sullivan County, Tennessee. Lieutenant Jeff Parker is on the hunt for an assailant who may still be with the victims. Well, we'll go to the ER first and see what we got. We have a female in here that's been assaulted by her boyfriend. We're probably going to have to go locate him if he doesn't show up here at the hospital. The suspect allegedly assaulted his girlfriend and his own father. The suspect is considered armed and dangerous. But the officers don't know what he looks like, putting them at a double disadvantage. They do know his name, Stephen Wright. He's not here. Has anybody pulled a picture of this young man up yet? But fortunately, he's been arrested before. Now, is this the same old boy that assaulted somebody down in the city with a hammer? What's his name? Something right? Stephen Wright. Stephen Wright. Sounds like it. Lieutenant Parker is concerned that Wright may be under the influence of bath salts. Hey, Lieutenant. A designer drug that looks like crystals you pour into a soothing bath, but actually can cause aggressive behavior, extreme paranoia, hallucinations, and years behind bars. Parker's hoping he'll find Wright at home. He calls for backup. We've got the young man over here off the road we're probably going to have to go get. May have a gun, may have to kick a door in and go get him. Supposedly, he's supposed to be at his house. We're not real sure if he's actually still got the gun. And if he's on bath salts, obviously he's going to more than likely be wanting to resist, not to go to jail. This is third from the bottom, on the right. You ready? Think you'd be little enough to get under that bed, do you? Nope, that's a chihuahua dog under there about to bite your ankles. Ah, let's get it. Alright. Well, we're not at the residence. While Sullivan County officers plan their next move, 70 miles east in Ash County, North Carolina, Deputy Josh Hobby Hopkins races to his own harrowing disturbance call. Right now, I'm headed to a salt in progress. My partner's already on scene. I'm trying to get there as quick as I can. The roads are slick. I'm actually sliding right now. I actually called for a medic unit. The medic unit 1018, so she's been assaulted badly. What's happening, brother? <laughs> oh, God. You know, I can tell it's been a rough right here. Did he hit you with any of the table oh, or anything? No, I was in the bed when he came in. She's a brother, too. How far along are you? Three months. What started it? He came in drinking. Okay. And yes, I drank earlier today, but I went in the bed. The alleged attacker is her boyfriend, who she claims threw a drunken tirade over their messy house. He's the father of this baby. <gasps> Oh, God. We'll take care of you. Take care of you. He just wouldn't stop. I think he was stopping. He just wouldn't stop. He won't be getting out for a while. Please don't take care of partner, he's going to take some pictures um, of the house for her. You want to the hospital with us? Yes, please. Maddie said she had a lot of uh, trauma to her head and neck. See it all the time. It's one of the most popular calls here. We're going to get her um, loaded up and take her to the hospital. While paramedics tend to the battered woman, Deputy Hopkins takes her alleged attacker into custody. Come in like that. Why well, her face all beat in? She came home like it. So you mean tell me she walked in there just like that? Is she is, is she pregnant with your baby? No, she is. She's not pregnant to begin with. Take her to the hospital. She's three months pregnant. Let me see. Let me see inside your face. Why you got Why do you got blood on the side of your face if she come in like that? Can we take her to the hospital? She's pregnant. I think she's not. We're gonna take her to the hospital because her face is messed up. I'm trying to give you a chance to tell your honest side of the story. How did her face get like that? You're not answering me. I don't know. You don't know? You don't know how you got blood on your face? 
Got my blood pump. Can I make a safe bet that there's blood on your hands too? Probably. Well, that's kind of strange, I mean, ain't it? I bet it's her blood. I know it's her blood. I bet she's not pregnant. Okay, well, let's go with your side of the story. You didn't do none of that, right? Let, let me see the back of your hands in. All right, you got blood and bruises all over your hands and fists. Do you see your hands right there? I bet she's not pregnant. So you magically got blood all over your fist. I bet she ain't pregnant. I don't care if she is. Okay, well, you still beat her. That's not my first rodeo, man. Know, you got blood all over you. Your girlfriend's beat up pretty bad. She's not pregnant either. Not my first rodeo. All right, watch. Well, I give you a chance to be honest. All right. She may be hurt pretty bad. She might have a rope nose. She got a big old knot on her forehead. Yeah, no, it's come on her attacking me, trying to get her off of me. Oh, really? Yeah, that, you know that's self defense. I call it. I've seen self defense. I don't think that's what that was. While Ash officers transport their assault suspect to jail, in Sullivan County, Tennessee, Sergeant Jason Height gets a call about a possible home break-in. Many robberies in Sullivan are linked to drug addicts looking to steal to support their habits. Others are motivated by poverty, people trying to survive. It's an open door. Somebody's come home from work or wherever they've been, and the, actually the front door of their house has been left open. It could be a, a burglary or a B&E. More often than not, if they come home and the door's open, it's a burglary. People come to their own home, find the door knock in, and go walk through the house to make sure nobody's in there. Well, if there is somebody in there, now you really have a problem. There's where you spend. I haven't been in. Is it unlocked or open? I don't know if it was open. It was unlocked. The depot, nothing was on. Okay. So I need y'all to check everything. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> My door's always locked. The depot and everything. All right, stay right here for me. We'll go in and check, make sure okay. things are all right, okay? Okay. Sheriff's office. left your house open for anybody. I don't know if anybody's been in your stuff yet, so I'll let you come in here and look around and see if anything's been taken or is out of place. But more often than not, what we find people come in and get is either your jewelry or if you got any kind of prescription meds, pain meds, anything like that, that can get those. Well, my son's girlfriend says she locked it, but... Y'all have a good evening. Thank you. Bye-bye. We'll see you. There's no signs of forced entry. Nothing appeared to be out of place in the house, so she was fortunate. <sighs> she was lucky. Back on the other side of town, the manhunt continues for Stephen Wright, accused of beating his girlfriend and father. There's no sign of him at home. Come back later and try again. And his registered vehicle is missing. But dispatch contacts Lieutenant Jeff Parker with a lead. Are both males? The driver's definitely male. Passenger, maybe male with a hoodie. In maroon. Either black or dark red. Or black. Wright's known to drive a maroon SUV. I'll start down that way and see if it may be them. I'll the back edge of this note. All right. Okay. See what we got. Parker thinks they may have their man. We just left the vicinity of where we were headed with two subjects in it. He arrives on the scene to find the vehicle already surrounded by officers. And they aren't taking any chances. Wright's believed to be armed and dangerous. Sullivan County Sheriff's Lieutenant Jeff Parker and a team of officers think they have their assault suspect, Stephen Wright, cornered. Think I'm a female in the passenger seat? Two women know Stephen Wright. Back to square one, and a violent suspect is still on the loose. Sorry about that, ma'am. We were looking for a young man who's supposed to drive the vehicle just like this. So. Okay. All right. We're, we're terribly sorry. You're, yes, ma'am. You're good. We're sorry we bothered you. Okay? All right. 
Appalachia can be a tough place, but it's also a region of profound beauty. Ash County, North Carolina, sits nestled in the stunning Blue Ridge Mountains, home to 27,000 residents. While 70 miles to the west sits Sullivan County, Tennessee, as one of the oldest counties in the state, it houses a population nearly six times larger than that of Ash County. In Sullivan, deputies aren't just married to their demanding jobs. Once in a while, they get married to each other. Turned 38 years old. Yeah, I got engaged. Uh, my fiance, Abby Reimer, she works for us. I asked her to marry me right around Christmas. And... <laughs> Thank you. She said, yeah, so I'm real happy about that. When's the big day? Oh, I don't know. He said like 2017. <laughs> I love her a lot. She's real good to me. And they ribbing me about it at work. Is that a ring? <laughs> I don't know his name. I guess because I didn't tell anybody. We're going to a possible DUI driver. Pulled over on the side of the road now, throwing beer cans out the window. Deputy Ford actually has another woman in his life right now. He's breaking in a new officer, Michelle Gillum, on a possible case of daytime DUI. Oh, uh, let's see what we got. Stand to your side, and when you start, you can't stop, okay? All right, we're going to go take nine steps. Build your toe. Make sure you heel touch your toes. One, two. Take your hand like this. We're going to go one, two, three, four. We're going to count to 30 in your head. Okay? Go. And you say all you've had is that one beer that's open right there, that none of these are yours. I just got here when you got here. If you have somebody that is like a career alcoholic that drinks all the time, they'll do well on their test because they're used to having to perform while they're intoxicated. So, uh, yeah, I believe he's probably DUI. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, I can't prove that all those empty beer cans didn't come from your car. It's you know it's an awful big coincidence for it to be the same exact same kind of beer you're drinking. Yeah. You live by yourself. You just got off work and you just happen to have seven beers. Okay, they don't sell seven pack of beers. I've arrested career alcoholics that done real good on their test, but their eyes is the same. So, this guy's had a few prior DUIs. He did do pretty good on his field sobriety. We don't have to ruin him and take his license away from him again. We'll have somebody come pick him up and then take him home and then come back and get his vehicle later. He'll be here in about 25 minutes. Well, let's sit in the car and be warm until he gets here. All right? You finish crossword puzzle and don't drink no beer. While Deputy Ford sits and waits, his fiance, Deputy Abby Reimer, is tracking down a suspect wanted for theft, assault, and resisting arrest. But she knows where to find him. He's living with his girlfriend. And a lot of people, you know, they don't want to tell on their family member or whatnot, but they can either tell us or if not, then we'll just take them to jail too if they want to hide them. And a lot of them will. They'll try to hide them. If he is living there, she could be arrested for uh, harboring a fugitive. We're turning on Cherokee Village right now. It's going to be this one right here. The suspect's girlfriend says he's not here. Who's under the blanket? But Deputy Reimer isn't buying it. Pull the blanket down. She finds the suspect. You better put your freaking hand. And arrests both him and the girlfriend. She can go too. Who's in no mood to cooperate. Y'all need to. You better quit. Stop it. I ain't even. No, stop. You better. You better. Sullivan County Deputy Abby Reimer has got her fugitive in custody, but his girlfriend is not going quietly. You better put your freaking hand. Stop it! I ain't even moving. Stop! I'm not moving. You understand me? You're freaking ignorant. Sit still. You can get an extra charge. I'm not even moving. Call my mom for me. Have a seat. Thank you. Apparently, I'm getting arrested. For being around him when he had a warrant. I didn't even know he had a warrant. I just started thinking. Yeah. You want me to charge her for the assault times too? Assault times too. That's freaking idiots. Idiots. <laughs> <laughs> it should be charged with resisting and harboring a fugitive. So they both go to jail. 
Anytime we have to put hands on anybody, yeah. we're just like, wow, it's so ignorant. There was no no reason whatsoever because all it does is just add to the charges they already have. I know it's going to be caught. Really didn't care. But this is not the only relationship in trouble. Over in Ash County, the suspect who allegedly assaulted his girlfriend is also headed behind bars. Well, do not come out of this cell. I won't because you're going to lock the door. You're going to stand there and you're going to wait till he gets his camera because you're going to take some more pictures of him. And then when we're done, we're going to shut you in here. Okay? You can't lock the door now? No. Oh, I'm standing right here. Right now, I'm going to go check out a misdemeanor uh, assault on a female. If it comes back that she's got nasal fractures and stuff like that, then I'll um, up it to a felony and charge him with assault. Flick the serious injury. Will you let me in this window? Thanks for him. Mark, here's your warrant, bud. All right, go back to sleep, bud. Enforcing the law in the mountains of ash takes experience. And with nearly 25 years on the job, Lieutenant Kelly Stevens has plenty of it. It takes three things to be a patrol deputy out here. Common sense, some BS, and a little bit of attitude. And if you can master those three things, then you'll be fine. If you're totally black and white, you won't make it. You never know out here at night what is going to happen next, so you're looking for the boogeyman. Or in this case, a burglar. Ash County has a wealth of vacation homes, usually empty during winter months. And the homes are often set far back from the roads, making them prime targets for thieves. Tonight, Kelly Stevens hopes to catch one of them red-handed. Most of the hunting is better at night than it is in the daytime. That's when a lot of the bad people come out or people that's up to no good. It's dark, that makes it inherently dangerous for the patrol officer, just because you can't see as well. There's more business, seems like, when it gets dark. Looks like everything appears to be okay. One time I went to a house like this and I pulled up and I walked around back and there's a truck behind the house. There was a, a guy coming out of the basement rolling a wheelbarrow. And uh, I didn't know if it was the homeowner or if it was someone breaking into the house. But when he looked up and seen me, he just sort of stopped with a wheelbarrow in his hand. And I knew right then when there was a big screen TV in the wheelbarrow that that didn't look right. The Ash County storage facility for stolen property is testament to the fact that the more time a thief has, the more he can steal, including vehicles, furniture, tools, even bathtubs and kitchen sinks. Over in Sullivan County, they are also fighting thieves. This is the criminal investigations unit. We're going to a residence on, in Bristol. We're going to uh, look for some stolen property that's supposed to be at this house. Well, our investigation unit got a tip that there's some stolen merchandise up this house. We can go try to do a knock and talk. Hopefully, we can get consent. You know, we don't have to go get a search warrant. But that's not all. Possibly a math lab up here. That's going to be all the bad part is getting consent to search and there being active cook. You know, you got the danger of explosions, you know, the chemicals. You know, and I really don't want to be decontaminated in 9 degree weather. You just got to be aware of your surroundings, really. You know, look for the mess signs and trash cans, batteries cut in half, the lithium strips taken off of them, blister packs, ice packs, all they used to make meth. Moonshine has been surpassed by meth as a concern for Sullivan County law enforcement. It's cheap and relatively easy to make from common household cleaners and chemicals. Authorities bust hundreds of meth labs in the area every year. Can you give us consent to search that way we'll clear your name? Yeah, I mean, everything's just the way it was when y'all... Okay, and what we'll do is, that way you're not tied into having stolen property in your possession. Absolutely, man. Right. Give that a second. Why have I seen this vehicle right here somewhere before? We're just running the field now. Just see if anything's stolen. It's going to be one golf 
November Echo. It's going to be an empty. Officers have been to this property before, and the more they look, the more they find. Well, this is the second time you guys have been out here. Is that 303? We got too many chainsaws. Small. Weed. See if you can't find the leaf or anything in the bottom. But marijuana is not all they find. Two bottles of grain opener and a thing of unopened salt. Potential ingredients for meth. <laughs> Sullivan County detectives are searching a suspect's home for stolen property when they stumble upon something unexpected. Two bottles of grain opener and a thing of unopened salt. Potential ingredients for making meth, but no paraphernalia to produce it. That's not all they find. Who's the surveyor? Surveyor? Yeah, this is survey equipment. I'm not a surveyor. I, I lay perfect. It's not mine. You don't know how it got in your garage? No, ma'am. Not unless it's some of the stuff that Drew and I brought here. Uh, now, the chainsaw, I, I tell you what, chainsaw's mine. There was like three or four or five different chainsaws in there, but only two of them's mine. I didn't purchase them and I didn't bring them here. Are you careful looking in the house or anything? No, go right here. Okay. In every room of the house, officers uncover suspicious items. Is that not yours? Yes, sir. Okay. You said yours, is it? Yes, sir. Jewelry. No, y'all got all my jewelry, my jewelry, everything. Yes, sir. Everybody else's jewelry that was stolen. But I know we're not going to remember 100%. Is there a guinea pig missing? We brought it out like, so it didn't get cold. But it's not a guinea pig, it's a... Uh, the property owner claims the items were left by homeless house guests. They came here once, got all the stolen stuff, and now you got more. I separated my stuff from the stuff that I didn't, that was here after they left. There was a gun and a few cameras that was left in my room. Other than that, the, everything was, I mean, it was all here when they came. You know, and I sat right in here while they done their thing. The only reason is a bin full of marijuana stuff. That was that was here. I don't know if they were making something with that. I don't know what they were doing with that. Just for my humor, can I see your arms? What you do right there? That's probably from working on the alternator in the car. I got them. I mean, I don't use needles. Sergeant Frazier can't prove any of the property stolen, so he won't be issuing an arrest warrant. You ready? Today. Up in the mountains of Ash, Lieutenant Kelly Stevens is attacking another vice taking hold of his county, alcohol. We used to not have a liquor store. we got a liquor store now. It seems like a lot of our calls are generated by alcohol. And it seems like alcohol is involved in a lot of the uh, violent crimes and the domestic violence. It's sort of like a, a downward spiral. A spiral that's got them serving a warrant tonight to a man known to battle the bottle. We're going to go out and arrest. He's a great big old guy. We know him pretty well. And he could give trouble or not. Just depends on how much he's liquored up. Mr. Grubb knows us, and we know him. He's given us problems in the past as far as having to wrestle him and fight with him. He will not be happy that we're there. The man thereafter, Johnny Grubb, has been in jail before, 24 times to be exact. They usually are warrants for child support. They have a cash bond on them here in North Carolina. He's held in the county jail until he makes that cash bond. And one of the big arguments I hear from a lot of the people we arrest, if you come out and arrest us and put us in jail, how am I going to work to pay my child support? And I don't have the answer for that question. In a case like this, there'll be two patrol deputies going to it for safety reasons. Counting myself for 107. Hey, Johnny. Hey, Johnny. Open the door. I need to talk to this Kelly from the Sheriff's Department, okay? He's coming to the front door. Hello, John. Would you let me turn myself in tomorrow? No, I can't do that now, John. You're here. This is child support duty up here. You're supposed to be here in court. You want to grab your shirt? Yeah, we got to take him to jail. We got to go to the freezer. Well, we don't have no choice. That's what we got to do. We need you. It's cold outside, Johnny, so you put you yeah. some shoes on. Set your liquor down. Have you got your medication handy? Johnny's all right. Dude. I know he's all right. Rob, have you got any warrants on you? I hope not. Yeah, we'll run a check on you. Don't run no damn check on me. Is there any way you want to let me smoke a cigarette? Yeah, you can you can uh, smoke a cigarette just for a second. 
Let him smoke a cigarette and have a beer. Let him have a drink. Let him smoke on his own. Why you have a cigarette and take a few puffs of it right now, Johnny, okay? Come on. Right. Johnny, I love you, brother. I love you, too, man. I'll be all right. Yeah. Take you another puff, put your cigarette out. I'll crack this window where it won't be so claustrophobic on you, okay? You all set? You okay? Johnny's a good fella. Johnny knows me by name, and I know him by name. He's got some drinking problems, and he seems to get in some trouble once in a while, don't you, Johnny? But sometimes he gives us a hard time. We have to wrestle him around, so. But like anybody else, nobody wants to go to jail, do they? Johnny, how intoxicated are you? I'm just going to be honest with you. I've, I've drunk this stuff for so long. I'm 46 years old. Yeah. It don't really affect me anymore. Yeah. Johnny knows that if he just continues to drink hard liquor and moonshine, that eventually uh, he will be dead. Just put that handcuff on your wrist right there. And in a lot of ways, you know, jail is a safer place because they don't have access to alcohol. Okay, that's good. Johnny, good luck to you. Take care, okay? You know, hopefully someday he can dry himself out. I hope so. Back in Sullivan County, Lieutenant Jeff Parker is still trying to find Stephen Wright, the man who allegedly beat both his girlfriend and his father. And he may have finally caught a break by researching the suspect's phone records. So he's 2.2 miles from Bays Mountain Tower, which means he's probably over on the interstate in a vehicle. We don't know at this time what vehicle he may be in, any description of the vehicle, or who he may be with. Lieutenant Parker thinks he may have Wright's car in sight. Four subjects here. Just turned off a Leela on two ship springs. I'm back for that intersection. Like there may be two males in the back. I could get turned around. Got one about to get out. The vehicle that was coming off of uh, Leyland as we were turning on, I had an officer stop it because he had two males in the back of it. Quick as he flipped his lights out, he got one of them trying to jump out of the vehicle on him. So maybe the gentleman we're looking for. Yeah, boy. Hold up. Hold up. As we were turning up, passenger in the rear seat there behind the driver opened the door and started to run. And evidently, he must have figured out it was K-9 unit behind him, so he decided not to run and got back in the car. Sullivan County deputies think they finally caught Stephen Wright, the man accused of beating his girlfriend and his own father. But it's not their man. I think it used to be married to my cousin. I'm thinking it's one that used to be married to my cousin, but I may be wrong. But this pair does have outstanding warrants. And now the guns, bombs, good missiles. Keep your hands on the trunk. Do not come off of it again. Do you understand? I understand. Nothing on your eyes. Nope. There's nothing on me. He got lower his head. Five foot warrants are going. I'm on an episode of Fox. Oh, for real? Oh, y'all look okay? Unfortunately, it's not the one we were looking for, but two more warrants served anyway. Things may be going wrong for Sullivan deputies searching for Mr. Wright. In Ash County, Deputy Josh Hopkins is on the hunt for another missing person. Apparently they've been in some kind of fight. He's got the uh, female's car keys, I think. So, off we go again. I feel like this might be a good one for some reason. We'll see. That's it. Hello. Good. What's going on? My husband just put off my keys. Are you married? Yeah, I was drinking, so... Well, why is he taking off with your keys? Well, I tried to break up him like two months ago. Did he take your keys because he's trying to drive while you've been drinking? No, he took my keys because he's trying to get my car. Sounds to me like marital property. No, it's not marital because he's an illegal immigrant, okay? <laughs> well? He took my keys and ran. Which way did he go? I don't even know. I should say that way or that way. He always outruns y'all. So what's the description? Oh, he's Mexican. 
<laughs> There's lots of Hispanic people around here. And he is wearing like a camo tight hoodie, which is blue and green. And he ran that way, the red hat on this way. Can you just get the keys back to the car, please? Well, I'm not magic. I don't know where he's at. Look. If you know about where he's at, tell us. In a tree somewhere. He climbs trees. Okay, well, I don't climb trees. If a sheriff's department ever issues trampolines, I'll jump up and get him one day. <laughs> Listen, like, if he comes back, it's your house. Tell him to leave. If you don't, we'll take him to jail for trespassing. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> she says that he is hiding in a tree, and I am not a tree climber. So, basically, she's drunk. These people just call on each other day in and day out. Deputies working in Ash need all the help they can get. Deputy Joe Francis knows sometimes that help can best come from a dog. That's it. Like Janos. Good boy. That's a good boy. Good boy. Let me have it. Hit them and get you again. <laughs> Somebody takes off running, they won't stop. I can see the dog, and he'll catch him. When he catches him, he'll bite him. Train the bite on the arm, he won't let go until I get there. Practice time's over. Deputy Francis receives a call from a local school requesting Janosch's help in sniffing out possible drugs. We find stuff occasionally, but that's the reason we do it, try to keep kids from bringing drugs to school, let them know that we're going to come in and check it. I don't know we're around. We ain't targeting one person. We're just there to try to keep the drugs out. They're met by the school resource officer. We work for the county. We have five schools in the county, three elementary schools, a middle school, and a high school, and there's one school resource officer per school. He knows he's going to go to work now. He's pulling. Janos is trained to sniff out illegal substances like marijuana, cocaine, and heroin. But his smell is so sensitive, he can even detect the scent of a tomato on a cheeseburger. Deputy Joe Francis and his canine partner, Janos, are conducting a random drug search at a local school. The dog pulled out a wrapped up thing of bubble wrap. It had duct tape uh, across it like something drugs would be wrapped up in. Who is that? Hey, found a wadded up <laughs> diaper <laughs> in bubble wrap. There's a purpose for this. We just don't know what it is. I'm wondering if we might, for curiosity's sake, maybe call her in. And I was told by the principal who called in the student that it was actually an experiment for a science project that's going to be going on uh, later this weekend. Case closed. Back at Ash County Jail, Sergeant Mike Spencer checks on one of his and Deputy Hopkins' cases. A man arrested for allegedly assaulting his girlfriend. I'm still one here. Uh, his name's Mark. We've had him in here several times. Mark, how you doing? Okay. Feeling all right? Yep. Okay, I just want to check on you, okay? Uh -huh. it's, it's pretty out of it last night when you come in. Mark, here's your warrant, bud. Okay. Did you remember seeing me? Yep. Okay. How much was your bond? About 25, you think you'll be able to get out? I don't think so. I don't think I'll make it. Okay, I'll see you later. Several weeks later, Mark still hasn't made bail. So he's stuck in jail until his trial. Detectives call in his ex-girlfriend to see if she'll testify against him in court. Papyrus. I'm nervous because I'm in the same building he's in. I thought I was pregnant. That's why he kept hitting me in the face, I believe. 
I thought I was, but I wasn't. Thank God. Thank God they were there to get him to stop. That was it for me. That was it. I can't do it anymore. Too old, too broke down. Can't do it. Now we'll be in court. Yep. With the help of her testimony, it's now up to a judge or jury to determine Mark's fate. Back in Sullivan County, officers hope their search for the elusive Stephen Wright, the man who allegedly assaulted both his girlfriend and his father, may finally be over. We chased him from around 6 o'clock, probably till after, till after midnight, and follow up on leads and people calling in, saying he's here and kind of saturating area to try to find him. So they have the tendencies to hide people out for us. But life, according to his family, that you can't keep friends too long from his drug abuse and his rage outburst. So he'll make somebody mad a couple days and call us and we'll go get him. As predicted, Stephen Wright was turned in by people he thought he could trust. Hey, Come on, take him two weeks. A little over two weeks to catch me. My name is Stephen Wright. I've been here. Three or four times. I'm in here for aggravated assault and aggravated domestic assault. Me and my dad got into an argument. I'd been doing drugs and uh, I'd run my old lady off and he was mad at me about it. We got in a fight. And they charged me for my old lady too. She was in the hospital and her mom had told her I assaulted her. It wasn't no fun looking over my shoulder, I can tell you that much. And they will catch you eventually. <laughs> 